thinking about going solar in 2026, maybe even this year, you've probably heard that solar leases and PPAs, power purchase agreements, still come with a 30% federal tax credit, even though the credit for homeowner-owned systems sunsets at the end of this year. 2025. On paper, this makes third-party ownership, where a company installs and owns the panels and you just pay to use the energy, sounds like an amazing idea. But today, we're going to be taking a harder look at the emerging downsides and risks of these solar leases or PPAs under the new U.S. solar policy. This isn't about being anti-solar. It's about questioning whether leasing is being oversold as a no-brainer choice for 2026. We'll cover new rules about approved equipment list, the shrinking options, and the rising electricity as well as equipment costs, and financial comparisons in the real world worries from actual homeowners. By the end of this video, you should see why the math might not always check out and why keeping control of your solar investment really, really matters. Let's dive in, skeptically. The 30% tax credit and approved equipment under the latest policy changes, solar leasing companies can now claim a 30% federal tax credit, that's Section 48E, on residential projects installed this year and after this year, while homeowners who buy systems can no longer claim the personal 25D credit after the end of this year. However, there is a big catch. To qualify for that 30% credit, the third-party-owned system must use equipment from approved vendor list. AVL that meets strict criteria. In other words, if the panels, inverters, or other components that build the system aren't on the approved list, the leasing company simply won't do the job. Now, this rule stems from the new Foreign Entity of Concern, otherwise known as FIOC, restrictions in 2025 Energy Bill, which deny the credit if too much of a system's value comes from a prohibited foreign-linked components. Think like major Chinese manufacturer, for example. Now, these AVLs are getting very tight. Solar financiers are rapidly cutting their list of approved panels and inverters to ensure that every project remains credit eligible. Now, many brands that used to be popular in the U.S., solar installation might not make the cut going forward. Now, the threshold on foreign content will notch up each year, meaning fewer options as the time goes. Now, for a homeowner considering a lease, this means that your your choice of equipment will become limited to a handful of models that the finance company trusts to comply with the rules. And here are the ripple effects. So if everyone is chasing the same limited pool of approved gear, these components could become hard to get and expensive just due to the high demand and constrained supply. Industry analytics are already warning of a potential supply crunch as installers rush to secure no restricted panels. Like installers are right now panicking and deciding to buy just the AVL approved product. Now I'm already seeing this issues with my distribution channels myself. Myself, but luckily, my customers are pretty much all cash or loan, so we don't really have to deal with any AVLs. Now, the chart above illustrates the issue of approved domestically produced panels, and you can see that they're significantly pricier than many imported panels. Now, why does that matter? Well, because if you go with a solar lease in 2026, the system will likely be built with those higher cost AVL approved components. You can't just opt to buy a bargain brand panel right here to save money because the leasing company simply will not do it if it's not on their approved list. Meanwhile, if you decide to purchase a system like with cash or even a loan, you have a complete freedom to just any equipment that meets your standard and your budget. Now, you may choose a cheaper or more affordable inverter or a panel. It just will not be on a company AVL. Now, one of the biggest and emerging concern is that the homeowner who lease may be forced into overpriced equipment, wiping out the very tax credit benefit that leases are supposed to deliver. Remember, the leasing company gets the 30% federal tax credit and theoretically passes the savings to you in the form of a lower monthly payment or upfront price for like a prepaid lease. But if the only panels available are say 20 or 50% more expensive than what a free market system might use, well then that credit is being applied to a marked up baseline. 
fine. So let's break down a hypothetical cost scenario just for the illustration of it. So we're gonna look at own system like cash or a loan. You might install an eight kilowatt system using economical non-AVL panels at around $2 per watt. Total price roughly $16,000. Since it's 2026, you get no federal tax credit for buying it, so your net cost is $16,000. Let's not assume any other incentives like in your state or by your utility. Just that's it, 16K. And then the second option is gonna be your leased system, prepaid lease or a PPA. Now the leasing company uses only AVL approved panels that cost maybe $2.50 per watt. So for that same system size, we're talking about $20,000 cost to them. Now they do get a 30% credit, so about $6,000 from the IRS, bringing their net cost down to $14,000. Now. In an ideal word, they would pass on all those savings to you, but what's the benefit for that? But in practice, they might price you prepaid lease, let's say at 17 or $18,000. Now that could be a bit less than the cash purchase, but not by much. And it could possibly be more when factoring other fees or higher ongoing PPA rates. So in this example, the lease isn't really a winner bargain. You're potentially paying around the same or even more than if you were to bought a system with cheaper hardware. Why? Because the equipment allowed for the credit is more expensive to begin with. Now, it's also important to realize that leasing companies don't always pass the full 30% tax credit savings to the customer. How much of that credit actually shows up as a discount in your contract depends on the company's business model and the market competition. Some might give you most of it, others might quietly pocket a portion to boost their profits. So the value proposition of, we'll use the tax credit to lower your cost, isn't 100% transparent. The bottom line is a 30% tax credit on a higher priced system may still cost more out of pocket than 0% tax credit on a fairly priced system. Don't let the lure of free money blind you into getting a good deal. Now, beyond the dollar math, going with a lease or a PPA raises a host of practical questions that every homeowner should consider. With an own system, you call the shots and you also bear the responsibilities. With a lease system, you're effectively renting your roof to someone else to use as equipment holder for 20 or 25 years. Now, here are some of the key concerns to keep in mind. Rooftop maintenance and re-roof. If your roof needs replacement, major repairs during the 25 years of that solar agreement, who's gonna pay to remove and reinstall the panels and how does that even work? Second, system performance. What happens if the solar system doesn't produce the energy expected? Do you still pay the same lease payment? Are there any guarantees? What happens if you underproduce? And third, maintenance and repairs. If something breaks, say the inverter fails in five years from now, who is responsible for fixing it and how quickly will that be addressed? Is it the leasing company or is it the original installer? Or maybe it's manufacturer's warranty. Now, to be clear, solar itself is a fantastic technology and can save you a lot of money on electricity in the long run. My goal here is not to discourage anyone from going solar, rather it's to encourage you to do due diligence and perhaps have some healthy skepticism towards the marketing zero down leases. In 2026, with the federal landscape changed, some sales reps are pushing leases hard. I already am seeing it on Facebook. Don't worry about the credit going away. We're going to get it for you. Just sign here, sign here, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to worry about any of the equipment maintenance. We all maintenance. We even give you a free battery after 10 years. It sounds insane and it's all BS. I'm so sorry to call it out like that, but if you're not in a position to pay cash for a system, that might be an option for you, but you have to do your research. And I always say, if something is pretty complex, it sounds a little bit sketchy to me. So when you own your solar system, either upfront or via a loan, you maintain control over equipment choice, who installs it, how it's maintained, how to fully recap basically all your financial rewards because after payoff, it's all free electricity. You also gain a tangible asset on your property and multiple studies have shown that owned solar panels increase the home resale value. Now, important 
friendly and owned system is typically seen as a home improvement that follows the house, boosting buyer appeal. By contract, lease systems, panels generally do not increase a home value, and in fact, they can deter buyers who don't want to take over a lease payment. Real estate agents often find that homes with lease systems require extra steps transferring the contract, getting the buyer credit approval, is just a lot more work. And in some cases, buyers request the system to be removed as a condition of a sale. In other words, you do not build equity with a lease. The solar company who sold it to you does. Realtors actually build up a pretty bad opinion on solar installers specifically because of the leases done by Solar City and Sunrun back in 2015, 2017. And how much harder is it for them to sell these homes? Control also matters for your peace of mind. When you lease, you are trusting a third party to act in your best interest for decades, to choose the right hardware, to install it correctly, to service it quickly, and to remain solvent. That's a lot of trust, right? If you have a problem or a question, you have to go through their channels. If utility rates or technology changes, you can't easily upgrade your system or modify your system like, hey, Martina, I want to add three panels to my system. It has to go through a leased provider. Some people are comfortable with trade-offs, prioritizing convenience and the low upfront costs and just want to focus on low monthly payments. Some will decide that they would rather be in the driver's seat and they would prefer to take on a loan or paying more upfront. Finally, consider the financial exit strategy. With an own system, once it paid off, you enjoy essentially free solar power for the rest of that system's life. With a lease or a PPA, you must have an option to buy out, at, you basically can buy it out at some point, like at year six or seven or 10, or basically at the end of the lease term. But that comes in an extra additional cost. So even though you're paying for it, then you're also going to have to be buying it. Now, many lease contracts include an escalator as well. So your payments actually go up a few percent every year. You can also buy that down. There's that's a whole nother video to talk about. But that takes care of your savings, especially if utility rates don't rise as fast as predictable. So be wary of sales claims that gloss over those details. Run the numbers yourself or with a third party or with AI. Oh my goodness, like this day and age, we really should not be making bad financial decisions where we have an expert in front of our eyes who can literally review quotes and proposal and help us decide what is best for us or better at least. Speaking of, this is actually, I think, a really good idea for a video to do. How to use AI to review your proposals and design and whether a system is good or not. So let me know down in the comments if you would actually like a video of that sort. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. I don't think I asked that yet. It really, 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 really helps me grow this channel. Okay, let's conclude this. Think twice before signing a lease in 2026. At the end of the day, a solar lease in 2026 might still make sense for some homeowners, especially those who absolutely don't want to utilize or can't utilize the tax credit, or they don't want to pay the capital up front. Leasing does eliminate the hassle of a big upfront payment and puts maintenance on someone else's plate. Now, those are real benefits, but as we've highlighted, the new rules and realities mean that you need to think twice before jumping in just because the 30% tax credit is still there for leases, which by the way, only for two years. That credit comes with strings attached, strings that can tangle up the economics and flexibility of your actual investment. Our skeptical take is that the math might not actually check out in some cases. So like if AVL approved equipment is pricier and the lease rates are rising to cover the, that cost, the supposed 30% savings could actually be an illusion. So always do a side-by-side -side comparison, a lease quote versus an ownership quote, obviously without the tax credit next year. You might actually be surprised that the ownership option, even without the tax credit, comes out equal or could come out better over the life of the system. So ask yourself, what will make you sleep better at night? Knowing that you locked in lower energy bills under a long-term contract, but with potential constraints and reliance on a third party, or knowing you have a full ownership of an asset on your own roof that you manage and you control. Now, there's no one-size-fits-all answer, but don't let the flashy salespeople pitches telling you, oh, you're missing out on the tax credit, sway you to make the wrong decision. Now, as 
this new year approaches, which is pretty damn close, you're gonna see a lot of marketing towards the leases because we're gonna see a lot of equipment supplying issues. We're gonna basically see everything shifting and companies are gonna be adjusting what they're offering. So it's more important than ever to read the fine print and to approach any solar deal with a critical eye. Now, if you do have some valid experience based on your lease that you sign, please don't hesitate to share down in the comments. A lot of people will really appreciate to hear from you, the person who actually did that. Now, you can also share your experience with me via email. I would really, really like that. Thank you guys so much for watching, commenting, and being here. It helps me a ton, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.